Hi there, this is David Dyer again, and today we're going to be talking about a subject which may be one of the most important revelations of the New Testament. We're going to be talking about who Jesus is. Who is this man, Jesus Christ, who claims to be the Son of God, and who came to this earth from the Father, died and was resurrected and ascended to the right hand of God. Who is this man? How can we understand who he is? Many Christians are confused about this subject. In fact, most Christians I know, in 48 years of following Jesus, most Christians, the vast majority, in fact, almost all of them, do not really know or see who this Jesus is. Now I know this is kind of a strong statement, but I hope as this video proceeds you will see how important this is that we know who Jesus is. How can there be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? This seems like three people, but yet the Bible says that God is only one. This is really difficult to understand, and in fact, we cannot understand it, so please do not try. We don't need more explanations. We don't need more doctrinal elucidations. What we need is revelation, and in the New Testament, there is an important and precious and wonderful revelation about who the Son of God is. And this is what this video is about. So please, take off your doctrinal shoes for a moment, since we are going to stand together on holy ground, and let's not engage our minds and try to figure something out. Let us open to God, open to the Scriptures, and allow him to reveal himself to us. Because this is the only way we're going to understand. If God, by his mercy, reveals himself to us. An ant, for example, can never understand a human being. And a human being, for his part, could never understand God. He can think and analyze and <laughs> scrutinize the scriptures all he wants. But unless and until God reveals himself to us, we don't know anything about the subject. So, let's pray together that God will use this video to show us who Jesus really is. Amen. Now we're going to start with an important biblical fact which many people don't realize, and that is that the Father God is invisible. That's right. You can't see him, and you will never see him. Why is that? Because he's invisible. He is not temporarily invisible. It's what he is. He is permanently and eternally invisible. Let's read a few verses here from the New Testament that will show us this truth clearly. We are going to read some verses from the New King James Version. First, we'll read from Colossians 1.15, which says, He, referring to Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. Now here we have our first clue that God the Father is invisible. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. 1 Timothy 1.17 says, Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the king we see here is eternal, immortal, and invisible. 
when is this God of ours going to cease being invisible? Only when he ceases being eternal and ceases being immortal. Because this is what he is. It's not a temporary state. He is not temporarily eternal. And he's not temporarily invisible. This is what he is according to the scriptures. This isn't what I say. This is what the Bible teaches us. Let's go on. Hebrews 11.27 says, By faith he forsook Egypt, this is Moses, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. John 1.18 Here we have the words of Jesus. Jesus himself says, No one has seen God at any time. That's right. Why has no one ever seen him? Because he's invisible and you can't see him. This is what Jesus teaches us. These are his words. Let's go back to 1 Timothy 6.16, talking about God, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, who no man has seen or can see. So not only has no one ever seen God, no one can see God. It's impossible to see him. Why? Because the Father is invisible. This is a biblical truth. Again, we read Jesus saying in John 6, 46, not that anyone has seen the Father. And in 1 John 4, 12, we read, no one has seen God at any time. Amen. Now, once we understand this fact about the Father, then we can go on to talk about the Son. Who is the Son? People saw him. He said they saw him with their eyes. They handled him with their hands. He, he walked with men on the earth. People touched him. He touched them. Who's this son? Well, the Bible teaches us that he is the image of the invisible God. Let's say I were to tell you about my wonderful wife, but you had never seen her. So I take out my wallet and I pull out a little photo and I, see, I say, here, here's the image of my wife. It's, it's her. It's what she looks like. This is what my wife looks like. It's her image. It's a photograph of her. So we'll read some more verses here and show that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Colossians 1.15 again will repeat, He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. So that's who Jesus is. His God revealing himself. God showing us his image. He's saying, here's what I'm like. Look here. This is my image. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, Bless the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Here we have another confirmation that Jesus is the image of God. God revealing himself. Let's go on to another verse. Hebrews 1.3 says, Who, being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person. Again, Jesus teaches us in John 1.18, 1 
no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. What does this mean, he has declared him? He's revealed him. He's shown him. He's imaged him to us. No one has seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He's the one who reveals Him. He's the one who declares Him. He's the one who shows us who and what God is. Let's go on. This is very, this is very interesting here because even though God is invisible, He wants to reveal Himself to us. He wants us to know Him. He wants us to understand Him. He wants to reveal Himself. And so He sent His Son. Some theologians get all tangled up with a verse that says Jesus was the firstborn of all creation. Well, this is really tough to understand. How can Jesus be always existent? Because we read in John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, if Jesus was always, since the beginning, which is even before time, was with God, how can he be born sometime down the line? How can, how does this work? Well, let's think about it this way. This message, which I am giving to you, is something that's been in my heart, in my bosom, let's say, a long time. But today I'm opening my mouth and it's coming out. It's being born in a manner of speaking. So God's image, his expression, the revelation of who he is, has always been with him since the beginning. The word was always with him. But one day he opened his mouth and he began to speak. How did God create the universe? By speaking. There was a time before time existed that God never spoke. But one day he opened his mouth and began speaking into being everything that exists. And so the word, which was always with him, eternally with him, came forth from him was born, so to speak, and through him he created the universe. The Bible says, through whom also he created the universe. How did God do that? By speaking. Now think about this. Jesus is the image or the expression or the declaration of the invisible Father. But how do we express ourselves? What is the main way in which we reveal who we are? I remember my first trip to Brazil, I did not speak one word of Portuguese. And I spent a lot of time with people who didn't speak English. And so there I was, but I couldn't communicate. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't tell them anything about myself who I was, what I wanted, nothing. It was a real handicap. The main way we communicate, we image ourselves, is by speaking. Jesus is the Word of God. Isn't that interesting? He's God revealing Himself, God expressing who He is, His Word. God communicates by speaking, and this word he calls his son. 
Now, I can't explain to you why he calls this word his son. It's what came out from himself and is just like him. In fact, it is the exact image of his person. Or another translation says the exact image of his essence. It's who he is. His word expresses who he is. And Jesus is that word. He is not God number two. He is not God junior. He is God revealing himself, showing us who and what he is by speaking to us. God in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, who is the exact image of his essence. Christians, many Christians are confused. Do they pray to Jesus? Do they pray to the Father? Who is Jesus less powerful? Is he a different personality? They have a lot of trouble understanding this, and rightly so, because we cannot understand this. But God can reveal it to us. Jesus had walked with his disciples for quite a while, and one day, one of the disciples said something interesting. Lord, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. Lord, we really like you. You know, we're a really nice guy. We, we love you, in fact. But if you just show us the Father, that, that would be the maximum. That would be it for us. And Jesus looked at him with surprise. What? Have you been with me all this time, so long a time, and still you don't know me? He who has seen me has seen the Father. I and Father are one. I'm not a different personality. I'm not a different bloke. I'm not God number two. I'm not God junior. I am God expressing himself. I am the image of the invisible God. All there is to know of God is revealed in the Son. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. How could he declare that? How could he be so bold? How could he know it wasn't Buddha or Confucius or some other thing like that? Because he is the image the unique, the full image of the invisible God. The Bible says that in him is the fullness of the Godhead. He is God revealing himself, and there is no God revealing himself someplace else. All of God's self-revelation is the Son. He is the complete image. Therefore, you can't find him in any other way, because everywhere he is revealed is in the Son. He is the complete revelation, and therefore there is no other way to God except through Jesus Christ. I hope you can see this and understand this. Jesus is not God Jr., God number two. He does not have, and this is very important, a different personality from the Father. For example, some people teach that Jesus is more loving and generous and the Father sort of crabby and legalistic, but this is not true. When we read about Jesus loving, we are told that it was the love of God which was in Christ Jesus. Jesus was declaring to us the invisible Father. He was revealing to us all that the Father is. But, wait a minute, some people are going to say, in the Old Testament, Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up into the mountain, and they, and I quote, they saw the God of Israel, and they ate and drank. Well, what's this? 
They saw God. And yet Jesus comes along and says, no one has seen God at any time. And Paul says, who no one has ever seen or can see. And there are other instances. Some of the prophets said, I saw the Lord. People in the Old Testament saw the Lord. How can this be? Well, it can easily be. Because even though Jesus was born physically in a manger through Mary, he has existed since the beginning. And when these people saw the God of Israel, they saw the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And therefore, Jesus is the God of Israel, revealing himself to them. The scripture says he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. The God that they knew in the Old Testament came physically to them and they didn't recognize him and they killed him. But there are not two God, there are not three God, there's only one. The Father is invisible. The Son is God imaging or revealing himself. And the Holy Spirit is simply the spirit of the invisible God. Let's not be confused about this. Let's not try to explain it by human means. I've heard these explanations. Oh, it's like an ice cube or like water. There's a solid state. There's a gaseous state. There's a liquid state. And then people have all these complicated explanations. Don't bother with any of that. Get in the scriptures. Meditate on what the New Testament reveals to us. These words that I've been quoting to you, these scriptures from people like John and Peter, I think when Jesus called them, maybe they weren't even literate. They hadn't studied. They were fishermen. But the God of the universe revealed himself to them in the person of Jesus. And as you open up to him and open up the scriptures, he will reveal himself to you in the same way. And you will know him for who he is and you will rejoice. Now this video is just the beginning of a series of two or three messages. It is a foundational video, a foundational revelation we need to have to go on and understand the rest of the gospel. So please go on and watch the next video, which I haven't made yet, but I intend to make it soon, and find out the rest of this important and precious and essential revelation about who Jesus, the Son of God, is. Amen.